please stand for our first hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory. Please be seated. Happy Pentecost to you all. I wish that you are showered with the wonderful blessing of Jesus Christ and blessed with a wonderful feast time with people of God. Despite the good news of the resurrection, the disciples were often confused and afraid. They have lost their leader. There was dissensions all around them. But as promised in John, advocate empowers, comforts, and encourages and strengthens the disciples. The day of Pentecost celebrates the way that the Holy Spirit acts within all who believe, helping us let us go of fear, dreams of better future, and trust God in all things. Now, as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, I would like to invite you, invite four readers to the front as they talk about water, wind, earth, and light. I hope that it will be a time for us to think about the work of the Holy Spirit. Thank you.
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. Of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders, the Lord upon many waters. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl, and the strips the forest bear, and in God's temple all cry, Glory. When you send forth your spirit, all living things are created, and you renew the face of the earth. All the earth and the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Psalm 24. I baptize with you water, but one more powerful thing, that one more powerful than I is coming, who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. May the Lord give strength to the people. May the Lord bless the people with peace. Let us pray. Amazing God, you call us today just as you called the disciples on the day of Pentecost. You challenge, it, you challenge and support us, revealing the brokenness of our communities, giving us the peace that our world needs. You point us to the pain of the cross and then remind us of the joy of the resurrection. Transform us, O oh God, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us breathe deeply of the breath of life. Blow through our worship and change our lives forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. When Jesus left his disciples, he did not leave them alone. He promised that the Holy Spirit would be present in their lives. And he gives them, gave them an amazing gift, his peace, the peace of Christ. Through the Spirit, this gift 
Gifts live still, and it is our to share, ours to share with others. So turn to those around you and offer Christ gifts with these words. The peace of Christ is yours today. Peace of Christ is yours today. Morning, everyone. How colourful you all look. What a beautiful sight up here from up here. Come, Holy Spirit, descend on us as we gather here this morning in Jesus' name. Please stay seated. Continue to ask for the Holy Spirit, living water, to dwell in us and make us all children of the light.
Good morning and welcome. And as Jan says, it's wonderful looking out and seeing all those touches of red amongst the congregation as we're gathered here. Welcome too to people who are listening to us online and we think of you as well. Uh, you should all have received a newsletter as you came in. Um, both fellowship groups, the Adult Fellowship and the Friendship Group, are meeting on Tuesday the 7th, the Adult Fellowship in the afternoon, the Friendship Group at night at 7.30, and the details are in the newsletter. Now, the Fish and Chip Lunch is coming, 19th. Um, if you are coming, we do need you to put your name on the list in the foyer because we're ordering the sort of fish you want to eat. So if you don't want a battered fish and you would prefer a grilled fish, you need to fill the form in so that we know and so that the fish shop knows which ones to cook. Uh, the church advertisement stickers and flyers, and they look great, are uh, out there, and you can take them with you. An induction service. Um, how do I say his name? Kay. 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 Uh, to this afternoon at the Tweed and Brunswick Valley Congregation, and that's at three o'clock at the Mullumbimby Church. And the Uniting Church property visit will be coming here between the 6th and the 9th of June. And this will be our opportunity to share our plan for the future ministry. Please pray for this visit. Thank you. Our first reading this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 17 to 21. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, and your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God. Our second reading this morning is from St. John's Gospel, chapter 14, and verses 25 to 27. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, before I the sermon today. I just uh, would like to say uh, it's uh, really great to see you, Bill Partridge and uh, Bill Davis. That uh, after the some time away because of the Ill illness, I know that it's still the long way to go. But I just pray for you and our congregation is pray for you both. So I uh, really it's good to see you here in this church and um, today. 
And then uh, the story of the Pentecost in Acts 2 is the story of the birthday of church. And Jesus just returned to God. And a short time later, during the festival of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit fell on Jesus' followers with a loud roar of the mighty wind. Then flames of the fire appeared over their heads, and they began to preach the good news about Jesus. At the time, there were people from all over the world gathered in Jerusalem for the festival. And they all heard the message in their native language from the followers of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. That day, the first 3,000 believers were baptized into Christ and the church was born. And we know that God never does anything by accident. So it wasn't accidental that God chose Pentecost to be the church's birthday. And Pentecost was the festival that foreshadowed what God would do for the world through Christ and his church. And I just want to show you why it was significant that God chose Pentecost, Pentecost as the day the church would be born. And Pentecost is the Greek word for 50th. And that's because it was 50th. 50 days after the Passover festival. And if you read the Old Testament, this festival goes by a few different names. Sometimes it's called the Festival of Weeks because it's seven weeks after Passover. It's also called the Festival of Reaping or Festival of First Fruits. That's because it originally celebrated the end of the seven-week grain harvest. And it was a time to be thankful and celebrate God's gift of rich harvest. Therefore, it's appropriate that the church was born during this festival of first fruits. Those 3,000 people who were baptized that day were the first harvest gathered into Christ. Over time, the festival also came to be associated with Moses giving the Torah at Sinai a few weeks after Passover. And this is where Israel was joined to God as his special covenant people. And we remember the pillar of fire traveled with Israel through the wilderness. The same thing happened on the day of Pentecost the individual pillars of fire appeared over the followers of Christ. The pillar of fire was a sign of God's presence with his people. So those flames over the followers' head were a sign that God was with them. And there was also a Jewish tradition at the time that God's words at Sinai began as a loud noise from the pillar of the fire that people eventually heard as a voice speaking words they could understand. So just like God called the people to himself as Sinai so that they could hear his words, now he calls people at Pentecost to hear his new word about Jesus. And the one final connection is with the book of Ruth. Over time, over time, it also became a Jewish tradition to read the story of Ruth out loud during the Pentecost. This makes sense. The story of Ruth takes a place during the grain harvest season, and that's what Pentecost originally celebrated. But Ruth is also a story about a foreign woman finding a home among the people of God. So as the story that began in Acts chapter 2 with Pentecost continues, God will call all people from every tribe and tongue, every nation on earth to come to be part of his people, the church. Therefore, Pentecost was the season of joy and renewal and new beginnings. 
It was a time that people were grateful to God for all the ways he had blessed them and they anticipated all the new and wonderful things God might do in our lives. And it was the time that God unleashed this new thing he, is do he was doing, the church. We, the members of the Austin United Church, are thankful because we can see how God has been leading us and how God has blessed us and we are anticipating the future with hope and we are dreaming big dreams for this church. And that's what we hear in Acts chapter 2, verses 17 to 18. And Peter wanted everyone who heard him preaching at Pentecost to realize that all these strange things going on, the noise and the fire and the speaking in foreign tongues, were the start of an old prophecy being fulfilled. And Peter was quoting Joel and saying, In the last day, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servant, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Literally, it means God is calling all kinds of people. People of all races, colors, ethnicities, cultures, and languages to come to be a part of this new thing that he was doing, the church. And God desires, values, and cherishes every kind of person. He also longed for his church to be vibrant, colorful, and harmonious with those people. And Peter continues, your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. It is not just male voices that count in the church. Every voice, every woman's voice, every, woman's voice, every man's voice matters to God and should matter to the church. And it is not only the young who gets to dream big dreams, but also the more mature saints, all the people who maybe don't believe they have any more dreams left in them, will dream big and exciting dreams for the future. What we heard in those two verses today reveals a couple of things about God's dream and vision for the church. First, God's dream and his vision for the church is that we will be the people who never stop dreaming together. The word together is so important. It's not just about my dream or someone else's visions for the church. God's vision and dream is so rich so that we dream all together like a family with diverse members. The dream you have and the dream I have are a piece of God's big picture. And if those pieces come all together, that will be the picture that God desires for our church. And second, God's dream for the church is that we are the place where all kinds of voices will be listened to and valued, male and female young and old, rich and poor, we all have something valuable to say, and each one of us can bring a unique gift or perspective. Therefore, living out God's dream and vision for the church means we must trust each other. We must rely on each other's gifts, insights, and perspectives. And I want you to know that God takes your dream seriously and constantly he's waking you up to new possibilities. That's what the Holy Spirit does in your heart and mind. 
as John's Gospel says, the Holy Spirit will teach us and remind us what to do. And I hope that you will continue to open your hearts to the Holy Spirit who is always at work. And now let's talk, talk just a little bit about our dreams and vision for this church and how they intersect with God's dreams and God's visions for us. Vision for us. The booklet you have in the bulletin was the minister's report in last February, and it contains the dream and vision for our Alston Uniting Church. And Alston Uniting Church has continued the ministry of Christ fulfilling its role in this area for a long time. We have been known as a very active and vibrant church for many years in this area. However, when we think of the future of this church and our ministries, we can all agree that they may not be bright like the past. And this was the comment from the presbytery on church profile in 2017. Without creative and effective leadership, the life of the congregation could become limited and decrease in attendance. At this point of time, the congregation is aging rapidly, and average age is 75 years. Now the time passed, five years passed, it must be 80 years. <laughs> And there are currently sufficient numbers of leaders available to partner with the ministry agent to further the kingdom of God. And we believe that this is a window of opportunity that will close within next three to five years due to the age of the congregation. The biggest problem we have is that there is no more generational succession in AUC. In the past, the, there had been uh, always next generations who could succeed and develop the ministries of the church. However, we have been experiencing a long-standing absence of the next generations. And this does not only mean young people, but all generations, including the retirees which now threatens the ministry of the AUC, and our situation is too desperate to be optimistic and to see and wait for the next generation to come into the church community. And there are three factors we need to consider here. Next. Next. Number one, new people. And then number two, new ministries. And number three, new resources. What would be the first? Which one must come first? People, yes. Ideally, as a new people come in, just naturally, New people, one day, just suddenly, the whole bunch of people came into our, come into our, 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 our church. That's a really ideal way. And then new resources also flow in, and new ministries are created through it. However, no church has ever success, succeeded in this way. I've never seen the church like that. The many researches in indicated that the church which have achieved generational successions and successful model of the ministry have gone the exactly opposite way. They gathered all available resources and they used those resources to build buildings and hire ministry, ministry agents and they support those ministry agents to start something new, the new ministries. And as a result, many new people came to church. If there were nothing to sell, then no one would come and buy. 
I will give you two examples for this. New Life Church on the on Gold Coast, which has a title, the most reviving church in UCA, Uniting Church Australia, went that way. Four local churches in the area were integrated with all available resources and built a new church complex and hired and raised young talented church leaders. And by supporting them, New Life Church became the leading church not only in the UCA, but also in Australia. They found new resources first, then hired new ministry agents and developed new ministries and new people came in. So now you understand which way we, we need to go. Another example is the Holy Trinity Anglican Church in Kew in Melbourne. The Holy Trinity Anglican Church is one of the oldest churches located in Kew in Melbourne. The church built a new three-story buildings building next to the church building and named it the Holy Trinity Learning Center. The, the building you, you see in, on, on the picture. The ground floor is list for commercial use. That's where they can find the new resources, the financial resources. And then the first floor is ground floor from the church and the second floor are where various programs and lessons can be held and to meet the needs of the local community. So that there are the, uh, and the Q is the one of the Melbourne's wealthiest town and has a large influx of the immigrants with the educational needs. So in line with this, the church is starting its facilities with the Chinese congregations. And also they are running various educational programs, including that the preschool and language sharing and all sorts of different, you know, the educational programs. Just think about in this place, you know, Austin Reuniting Church, we are the center of the town. There's no doubt for it. And then we have uh, the two schools next to us and then high school down the back, the students must pass this street, this main street. So everyone, every children, every schoolers, when they start the class, when they finish the class, they must pass this way. This is a really central part of Austinville. And then when you come to the, in the school time, our Car park are full with the car park is full with the all sorts of cars around and picking up the keys and dropping up, and our bargain basement people and come and shop. All different activities that happen in, in, in this church. But I'm just asking you, we feel it's the center of the town. What about the local people? Do they think that this is the center of this town? Probably Plaza is the one, <laughs> but it can be that you know, like it can be the center of town, you know, like you know, that culturally, emotionally. You know, of course, that you know, there you know, all the uh, economic things happen in the Plaza, but you know, all the other activities happen can happen in this place when they have uh, something, you know, celebrate something to celebrate, then come and do in here. If they do need help. They can come and ask for help. So our plan is this. First, we must find new sources of income. As you remember, in the late 1980s, leaders of this church opened Bargain Basement. Since then, Bargain Basement has become one of the main ministries of AUC, and now it occupies a significant portion of our church's finance. And the church is maintained through its ministry. And after we find new resources, and we will find new ministries, which meet the demanding of new people, not just for Christians, but also for non-Christians. 
Location-wise, as I said, we are centrally located in Austinville, but we must truly be the heart of Austinville. We must let lots of people not only pass by, but also come in and dwell in us. It can be the center of the culture in Austinville, and it can be the meeting place for all. It sounds like a good plan, but how we can achieve it? Our plan for the future should never be only words or abstract. Our plan should be specific and achievable goals. So we need to divide the plan into three stages. And stage number one, small but meaningful changes. In other words, it's something we can do straight away. The things that we can do, what we already got. We already carried out, Josh, please concentrate. We already carried out small things. We cleaned the hall and cleansed the committee room, the room near the amenities in the hall. And that has been unused for a long time. So we moved all the chairs in the hall to that room. So you can see the, how clean it is. And we cleansed the uh, hall and, then we, and we make the keys area in the church, placing keys table and mat. It's a really small thing, and we, but we saw that the little, that little space made a change at Easter time. You remember the Gillis family, that the kids, that they gather there, and then they have a really fun over there. And, and also, we put some chairs in the vestry. It's a really small change, but meaningful, because our choir members can sit and wait and pray until the worship starts. So that, those are the things that are really small but meaningful. And there are many areas that we do not use for any purposes. However, we need more space for our present and future ministries. Therefore, it is necessary to find unused space and make it usable. Like the veranda of the office or the stage in the hall or the kindergarten room in the hall. There are many spaces that are unused at the moment. So that's stage number one. And stage number two is pre-work pre for big changes. And at this stage, we need to find a new income sources, new ministries. And also includes some minor or major renovations. We need a new roofs in the hall, and then number 20, no 12, Bogdan Avenue. We probably need to install solar panels and air conditioning in the hall. So at this stage, we will have to prove ourselves to be a uh, to be a, a viable and a capable church. So that we start something new, we just apply something new, so that the, you know, at least a few people coming in, that probably that people, I mean, would know that there is a possibilities in this church. So that, that's not stage number two. And then that's where we can achieve the things we already got. Is within our capabilities. But stage number three is a far beyond our you know, abilities because that's just a dream. And then if we say the new beginnings, it's our final goal and we will fulfill the mission God has given us. And then how we Achieve it? I don't know. <laughs> but that's, I mean, 
that must be our prayer and that must be our dreams that must be our vision given by the holy spirit as today's john's gospel said he will let us know what to do and remind us so we are already implementing this three stage plan and now i invite you to invite you to dream together as i said together is really important the plan I introduced today is just my suggestion. It's not a church's decision yet. The plan, but if you have any plan or comments or suggestions, please come forward and share your ideas with me or the church council. Your dreams and voices are important to God and to us. So, Let's dream together. In this holy season, the Pentecost, we will keep sharing uh, what to do and then what's happening. I will share with, with, with you, but at the same time, please pray with me and then just share your idea with me. Let us pray. Lord, we are so, so grateful to be a part of your church. So grateful to have re received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, placing us into union with all other believers in the one body. So grateful to be part of being in Christ and all those who are in Christ who are one with each other, among whom there is neither male nor female, young and old. Make us faithful in the church to minister to serve, to love, and to rightly represent the one who died for us to purchase the privilege that we have to be part of the church. Bless all who are here this morning, Lord, and we pray that you will find ways in which this powerful and rich truth can be passed on by us and be found useful in the life of others. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. And we will sing the next hymn, My Wonderful Dreams. Please, please be seated while we are singing.
the passage of death will be only a breath, but a breath and my dream will come true. Oh, this wonderful dream is a secret of grace, and I would this secret you knew. For I dream that at last I shall look on his face, and I know that my dream will come true. Reverend Daniel had a phone call this morning uh, with not good news. Uh, Lena Kiesecker had a bad fall. Lena no, Kiesecker heard that. Bad news. Yeah. Oh. And she has, she will undergo surgery. <laughs> yes. No, Lena Kiesecker got the message from the Betty Mooney's family. Oh, right. Betty Mooney has got a fall. Right. Yes. Sorry, not Lena, but... Right, sorry. Um, so we ask that, th that... They have requested that we will pray for the surgery and for the outcome will be a, re a good one. And now let us come together in prayer. Almighty God... We give thanks for the events of this powerful Pentecost day. The experiences of those early leaders of your worshipping community were both surprising and scary. No wonder the onlookers wanted to dismiss them as being drunk. We are awed at the power of your spirit which made them fearless. Your spirit gives life and courage. In this day and age, empower us to be fearless members of your family of believers. Your spirit gives gifts and abilities that equip us to serve in many different ways, with hearts that are open to Christ's love and minds that are receptive to the truth. Help us to reach out and support others and our community here in Alstonville. As we view the continuing war in Ukraine, we pray for the citizens there. We pray for world leaders that they may work together to find a peaceful solution to Russia's occupation of that country. May tolerance and understanding guide world leaders as they seek to end the invasion. We pray for our newly elected federal government. May those who have been elected use their positions of power for the good of all citizens. Across the world, we pray that the selfishness and self-interest of nations will be replaced with the joy and vitality of Christ's spirit. May respect and care for the earth and the nations of the world be developed. Banish thoughts of superiority, of colour or of race, Give us all Christ's spirit of humility, long-suffering, and a readiness to share so that we can live in peace. Lord, you have made up one blood all the nations to dwell together on the earth. Bind us together in respect and love. For the days ahead, we pray for all whose work is dangerous. Keep them alert and careful. Grant perseverance to all whose work is dull and repetitive. 
give them encouragement and patience. Be close, Lord of healing, to those who are ill or in failing health, and for those who Lena has asked us specially to pray for this day. Be with the surgeons and the staff at the hospital where surgery is taking place. Surround those who are in need with your love. Uphold the family members who watch over and worry about those who are ill. In the silence, in our hearts, we know those particularly near to us who each need your help this day. Guide and strengthen us by your Holy Spirit that we may give ourselves to your service. May we live this day and every day depending on you. These things we pray in the name of Christ and together we pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give our thanks to the Holy One. It is, right to give our thanks and it is a right, good, and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give our thanks to you, who poured out tongues of fire on the disciples at Pentecost. You promised to give our young people visions of a better world and our elders dreams of peace. All who are led by your spirit are your children, joint heirs of Christ in both suffering and glory. And so with your cre creatures on earth and all the heavenly chorus, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and holy is your child Jesus, who sent the Holy Spirit to be with us so that we would not be left alone. On the night, which he gave, he gave himself up, Jesus took bread, broke it, and saying, Take it, all of you. This is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat it, do so in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for the healing of the world. Whenever you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts, of, acts in Jesus Christ, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. 
Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on, on us and on these gifts of grain and grape, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. Make them for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be the body of Christ. Filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit for the healing of the world. Sender of dreams, spirit of truth, giver of visions. You are the one God to whom we offer our praise and thanks. Amen. Christ is the bread of resurrection, new life to all. Christ is the cup of salvation, wounded for healing. Now I invite the Holy Communion server to the front and then we will take the Holy Communion and think of Christ suffering and his resurrection. the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. Now we stand, stand up for the joyous hymn which is together in song 422, Come, Holy Spirit, come. While we're singing this hymn, your cup, uh, cups will be collected by the communion service. Thank you.
the God who made this amazing universe is creating you anew every day. Jesus Christ, the resurrected one, offers you peace that never dies. The Holy Spirit is setting your hearts on fire right here, right now. Go in peace and be transformed that you may change the world. Amen. Send the sound in the power of your spirit to shine your light in the way we live. Send the sound in the power of your spirit as we receive may we freely give. Send the sound, send the sound, send the sound for your glory. Let all Let all we do be praised to you. 